Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered what you would do during a zombie apocalypse? There's a few things that I've learned after researching the subculture of doomsday preppers, or also known as just preppers. During this presentation, I'm gonna go over a little bit about what is prepping and who are the preppers, the little bit of history, and a little bit of overview on some of the lingo that they use and the bug out bag. Now first, who are they? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary definition defines a prepper as a person who prepares something or prepares for something. Specifically, a person who gathers materials and makes plans in preparation for surviving a major disaster or cataclysm. Prepping is known as a practice of anticipating or adapting to impending conditions of calamity ranging from low level to extinction level events. Prepping became a thing unknowingly. It started from just doing every day-to-day -day activities like canning goods. Now a little bit of the history. A lot of this started during 1950 during the Cold War when the government encouraged people to build fallout shelters for nuclear fallout and to prepare for that disaster. And they also did a lot of drills for that disaster to get to their safe place at certain times. Now in 1967, an, an author came out with a book called Retreaters Bibliograph, and it encouraged building retreats to remote locations. And, the, and, and this author termed preppers that we know today as retreaters. Now in 1975, Kurt Saxton wrote a newsletter called The Survivalists, or The Survivor, excuse me. And he, he used the term survival survival survivalists. And he depicted in his writings how to make homemade weapons. And a lot of people thought that was controversial for the time. Now, survivalists versus retreaters. Now, survivalists are more combative in style, while the retreaters like to avoid conflict and like to stay invisible. Now, this goes into people have published hundreds of books, making this industry a multi-billion dollar one during these, this time. Now, in 2001 is when the term preppers became more known. But according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it was actually a definite, it was actually a term used in 1904. And on from that, the biggest disaster that really started the government to encourage prepping was 9-11. They encouraged the getting stocked on disaster kits and getting people ready to evacuate if anything would happen. And other disasters like Katrina and the Great Recession has prompted people to want to prep more. In 2010, the prepping movement was more active and pushed to make differences than the survivalists in the past. It became more popular when National Geographic came out with the Doomsday Prepper show in March of 2012. A little, a little interesting thing is people use this term as they, it's a lifestyle and it's an identity. Now, uh, FEMA, I mean, uh, a study was conducted um, by FEMA out of 5,000 households, um, a household was prepared or was deemed prepped if they could survive at least 31 days. And in 2017, 3.8% of people were deemed prepared, and it increased to 4.5% in 2018 and to 5.2% in 2019. It's impressive. Now, a little bit of overview. The lingo, like bug out and the end of the world as we know it, and when crap hits the fan. They use these terms interchangeably in all sorts of forums that I've researched and read up on. Preppers anticipate either natural or man-made apocalypses and they, that will result in total collapse of society. And it prompts them to prep by securing places to shelter during crisis. And they... Um, 
stockpile for their homes with food, water, medicine, and fuel. And this goes into the bug out bag or survivalist bag. And it contains usually food, water, um, flashlights, money, camping equipment. It's also known as emergency kit, 72 hour bag, go bag, evacuation bag, survival bag, um, I'm never coming home bag, good, which is get out of dodge bag, and when crap hits the fan bag. And I have a little video on the survivalist bag. You are the best person for making your own survival kit. You know what your needs are, your family's needs, your terrain, what your situation is going to be. Most people call this a bug out pack, but I just refer to it as a survival pack. Tools are what's important. This is from a chainsaw. The wire saws in the backpacking stores are junk. Oh, a sling. There are birds and ducks and things, and if I had to, potentially I could catch some meat for dinner with my sling. A knife. You never have enough knives. So one of the things that I suggest carrying in a survival pack like this is articles of trade. These are a roll of Eisenhower dollars. So people will treat this as if it's worth more than a dollar when they want cash. Homemade arrow points. It could be used for making arrows. They could be articles of trade under certain circumstances. They are intrinsically useful. And that just gives a little overview of a bug out bag. Now in conclusion, this wraps up the subculture of doomsday prepping. We've hit on who are they, what is prepping, a little bit of history behind it, and a little overview of what a bug out bag and some of the lingo that they use. Now, I hope that this presentation gives you a little insight on the identity and lifestyle of prepping and not to judge a book by its cover when someone says they're a prepper. They're not just crazy. They're actually just normal people like you and I. Thank you, everybody.